Hi everyone, my name is Nisha Sachinani and it's a pleasure to share a few ideas with you today about how drama therapy and theatre may contribute to our health and well-being, especially during this time of the pandemic. Theatre makers know that theatre isn't typically very good at social distancing. In fact, in normal times, the heart of theatre involves a ritual of strangers coming together, rubbing elbows, breathing in the same air, and telling stories in a live encounter that makes us feel less alone and a part of a larger community. When this pandemic began, we saw physical theatres close along with so much else, and it felt like everything was being cancelled overnight, and our usual sources of comfort and recreation were replaced by a frightening and sudden new reality. Yet, amidst the losses, rising unemployment rates, and reminders of how many more were infected in our own communities, our collective desire to partake in rituals where we could share in each other's experiences of grief and joy eventually found a way. We drove past each other's homes to celebrate birthdays, weddings, and graduations. We visited vulnerable older adults with drive-by parades when we could. We met each other online to mark funerals when we could not gather in person. We sat on stoops, stood on sidewalks, and got to know our neighbors. And if your city is anything like mine, we participate in a daily ritual of clapping for our essential workers. Theaters large and small from around the world came together to share recordings of main stage productions online. They commissioned playwrights to write plays specifically intended for an online environment to encourage imaginative interaction while at home. Famous actors read stories from their homes, which gave them a sense of purpose and offered comfort to children and supported parents who were and still are juggling childcare and work. Some, like the Jack Theatre in Brooklyn, took more direct action and transformed into a food distribution centre. This pandemic has also called significant attention to interlocking forms of inequality, including the digital divide in terms of who might not have access to computers and Wi-Fi, and the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 in Black, Indigenous, and other racialized communities, many of whom are our essential workers. Theatre makers have demonstrated their solidarity by transforming closed theatres into a refuge for a growing mass movement fighting what many have come to refer as another long-standing pandemic of anti-black racism and white supremacy. And new forms of theater have emerged in this crisis that build on the kind of intimacy and liveness that can exist on screen as actors and new audiences meet each other from the privacy of their own homes. What can drama therapists do to support individuals and communities managing the various impacts of this pandemic? Drama therapy involves the intentional use of theatre-based processes, including movement and metaphor and mimesis, to facilitate physiological, psychological and social health. Drama therapists in offer individuals and communities a highly engaging, non-stigmatizing approach to rediscovering a sense of trust and joy in their own bodies, in a group, in their own capacities for creative expression, and the ability to share their story with a chosen audience, which can increase confidence, self-acceptance, and reduce stigma. In the context of this crisis, drama therapists working on the front lines have used their skills to create facilitated spaces for hospital staff to mourn the many losses that they have witnessed, including the losses of their own colleagues. As we have transitioned online, drama therapists from around the world have adapted to telehealth or teledrama therapy to meet participants in their homes. And here the focus has largely been on decreasing anxiety, helping children and adults recover a sense of play together, and fostering meaningful social connection. One such example was our Drama Therapist at Home project, which was an online performance gathering intended to sustain care providers by offering a creative venue to express their experience of this time in movement, poetry, story, and song. 350 care providers from 35 countries joined over three days to share the complexity of caring and being cared for in this time. All right. Is everything going to be all right? Is everything going to be all right? I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. It's just my bad luck. 
not only do I have to freaking perform, but I have to be a decent therapist. How can we feel safe with you? While you still insist we carry home your centuries old white burden. Police, our fathers in their state. Oh, there's so many of you. How have you all fitted on the screen? I didn't expect so many. You know, you know, with this COVID, it's amazing what you can find in your house to dress up in. I love dressing up. Sarah, can you hear me? Yeah. Good, good. Um, I can hear you okay, but I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing your faces. I miss getting down on the floor. I miss using my body. I miss not wanting to use my body. To conclude, Drama therapy invites an encounter with many parts of ourselves and each other, even when physical proximity is not possible. By focusing on breathing, movement, imagination, play, and storytelling within supportive relationships, we may reduce the negative effects of this crisis on our physical, mental, and social health and well-being. For more information, please see our research journal, Drama Therapy Review, or the World Alliance of Drama Therapy. Thank you.